throw your hot tub, don't have to be a water transfer mate or a technician, that type of thing. So before we get started, let me ask a couple of questions on what kind of applications we have. There are a number of different systems. Some people just use traditional granular chlorine process. Some people use the, the mineral sticks. Some people have the salt water system. So there's a variety of systems. How, how many of you have the salt water system? Nobody. And how many use one of these what we call the mineral sticks? And how many use just traditional chlorine? And how about bromine? So we have no bromine, we've got chlorine, and we've got the mineral sticks. Yeah, right? So um, people always ask me, what kind of water crystal clear? Really, there's really just two or three things. You can sanitize with water. So chlorine, Chlorine or maybe some of these mineral sticks with a little bit of chlorine periodically, and we'll use some non chlorine, we call non chlorine shock that activates it. So, the first thing is keeping sanitized with water. The second thing, hope you've all tested the pH before, right? The pH is really critical that we keep that between 7.4 and 7.6. Those are kind of the two main things. In fact, when, when you, when the health department goes out to like a commercial hot tub at a hotel, motel, there's really three things that they look for to make sure that the water is safe. Is number one, there's enough chlorine in the water, the pH is at balance, and you can see the bottom of the hot tub. Because I know it sounds, it, it is funny, because if you think about it, the water could be fine. You could have chlorine, the pH could be in balance, and the water could still be so cloudy you couldn't see the bottom. The problem with that is, even though it is a small body of water like this, that could potentially be a drowning risk. Right, there could be some little kid that fell into the hot tub and, and you wouldn't be able to see that they're struggling. And so that's kind of the, the main thing. So we got to keep sanitizing, keep the pH in, in balance. So uh, today, what we're going to do in your packets, there's a couple of pieces of information. There's kind of a general spa care guide that you can take home and re refer to. There's um, uh, there's also a sheet with kind of the top questions we get asked, and this sheet is what I'm going to go over. This morning, these are kind of the most commonly asked questions that we get asked about. Uh, there's a sheet on um, some of the services that we have. If anybody needs a pen, anybody need a pen? <clears throat> and, um, um, and then there's also a sheet in here on reviewing our class today. So we, we do do these a couple times a year. If you've got some suggestions on how to make it better or suggestions on different topics that we could talk about we would be glad to do that and then the other the other thing there's a coupon in here we're already having what is it 15 percent off today and if since you're here for the class you get an additional 20 percent so if there's any supplies that you need today everything is basically 35 percent off if you, if you need anything so um, so we'll get started and so if you look at the sheet that talks about how often the top questions that we get asked is how often do we need to drain and refill the hot tub? And so that's kind of the million dollar question, is it really depends on how much you use the hot tub. So some people will go, you know, five or six months. Some people drain the hot tub, you know, every two months. It really depends on really what we call hot tub user load. You know, people always ask me what's kind of the average, that takes three to four months. But if you use the hot tub a lot, maybe there's four or five people in your family, you're using the hot tub you know, two or three times a week, you might only be able to go a couple of months. What happens is the water gets old and worn out. And so it looks cloudy, it foams a lot. That's a pretty good indication that the water is just trying to drain and refill. The, the water care products that we're putting in don't seem to react as well any longer. It's basically the water is worn out. Just to kind of put it in perspective, like a commercial hot tub at a hotel motel that gets free, you know, they might get 10 or 15 people a day. Most of those are draining weekly because of the higher failure load. And so, again, it's, it's kind of, I can't tell you all in here if you need to drain every three or four months. It's really predicated on how much you use the hot tub and, frankly, how well the water looks. If it's crystal clear, it's not foaming a lot, the, the water care products that we're putting in seem to be doing a good job. You can keep going, but if the water is cloudy and foaming a lot, you probably would want to drain, drain, fill. In the booklet, on see on what page this is on. There's 
there is a formula to calculate how often to bring and, and refill. Maybe we took it out of this newer book. But, but basically, there's a math formula. You take the gallons of your hot cup, you divide by three, you divide by the number of people who use the hot cup per day. And whatever that answer is, that's the average. Page three. Oh, thank you. So on page three, is, is the gallon of your hot tub, you know, most hot tubs are three or 400 gallons, divided by three, divided by the number of people that use the hot tub per day. And, and, and what that is, every 15 minute increment of somebody using the hot tub is considered one person. So two people for a half an hour would be considered four. So that's the math, but whatever the answer is, that's how often you should be bringing and refilling. And frankly, that's what the health department uses. The health department or a commercial operator of a hot tub, that's the formula they use to calculate how often the, the drain and refill. All right, so let's look at the next the next question. Is what's the best way to clean my filters and how often should I clean them? So typically we recommend cleaning, pulling these filters out once a month and closing them off and just do a good, get the you know, fairly high pressure with your, with your garden hose. Don't take them to like a car wash and use the real high pressure that can tear these, tear the paper, tear the paper cartridges. Just rinse it real well once a month. And then every time you drain and refill, you know, if that's every three or four months, we want to chemically clean these. And the product that we'll use is just called Silver Cleaner Degreaser. And this can be applied one of two methods. You can either spray it on full strength. Let it sit for a half an hour, 45 minutes, and then just rinse it off real well. You do want to make sure you rinse this cleaner off real well. If, if there's any of this cleaner left on the cartridge, it'll cause, um, it'll cause a bubble bath effect. So you'll get a lot of foaming. If you ever put this cartridge back in, you see a lot of foaming, you may not have rinsed this thorough, thoroughly and thoroughly enough. Are we grabbing some more chairs? Um, yeah. That'd be, that'd be um, the other method of cleaning these is soaking. The soaking method. Who uses the soaking method? That's probably the most thorough method. Is getting enough water in a you know five gallon bucket, enough water, and you use like a half a half a quart of this with enough water to cover this cartridge. In fact, the smallest amount of water you can use, the better. You want to make this as concentrated. So if you have like a little Rubbermaid tub with just enough water to cover this. And put a half a quart of the filter cleaner degreaser, let it soak overnight, and then rinse it off real well. In fact, probably the best of all worlds would be to have two sets of cartridges, one that's in use, one that's been cleaned, rinsed, and dried. Yes. So the hot tub, but there's the ingredients to use the clean one, and the first thing, right over right there. Yes. And then suck up there. Yeah, you can use a, there's some spa vacuums that you can use to suck up the dirt, is that what you're talking about? here and maybe get Jeff on the phone and ask, say, hey, my heater's not heating. And the first, one of the first questions he's going to ask you is, how long has it been since you cleaned this? And what will happen is, if this gets too dirty, it reduces the flow, the circulation in the hot tub, the heater won't work. It's got kind of a safety device in there that will stop the heater from working. This is usually one of the first questions that, that Jeff and the team would ask. Yes? So is it normal for that gray, silver, what do you call that, silver disc? The mineral cartridge? Is it normal for the mineral cartridge to discolor that? No, 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 it doesn't discolor it. It's usually your uh, minerals in the water. Like because iron. Because I'm the three filters, the filter, and when I emptied it out, that, that the, the filter that had that mineral thing was discolored around the end. And yep. then when I cleaned them and I rotated them, and I put the other, a different filter out of the three of them, it ended up getting discolored again. Right, because that, that circulation, that's for your circulation filter, that's going to get the dirtiest. Okay. The other three are only getting uh, water through them when the jet pumps are on. Oh, okay. 
Oh. That one's getting water through it at all times, so it's going to get dirtier. Okay. That's why we still want you to clean them and rotate them, because otherwise that one's going to wear out way faster than the other one. So you rotate it, and it, it sits out of uh, major use for three rotations. And how often should you replace the piece? Uh, once every two years um, uh, is the minimum, or is the, you know, when we generally recommend you do it. But it kind of depends on what they look like. Take a really good care of them. They can last a little longer, but yeah, generally two years. Yeah, that's a, I mean that's a real good question because the way I mean, even though that's maybe gotten a little bit discolored, like Jeff said, that could just be some minerals in the water. That doesn't mean it's bad. And so when you start to see a lot of the fibers coming out of the this is, this is a paper cartridge, you start to see a lot of fibers coming out. Maybe this band has gotten broken off. Uh, maybe in fact, if you if you chemically clean it and then notice that you're still not getting very good. Yet pressure, it, it's probably time to replace this. Yes. So you're talking about paper filters, but really the filters I have are more like a polyurethane. Ceramic. Ceramic. Okay. So the ceramic is still two years. No, ceramic are actually five years, okay. and they actually clean. Uh, they're double the price, but they're actually easier to clean. Um, they they will hold up for longer. And I can still soak them for yep. forty five minutes in that thin thing. Can you, run in the dishwasher you can, uh, <laughs> so they, they will hold up in the dishwasher, but um, generally they won't get as clean in the dishwasher as they will with you just manually spraying them. Uh, the dishwasher jets just aren't strong enough. They're going to clean off the surface. So I would only use a dishwasher for a quick cleaning, um, but for when you're doing your general monthly, you really should be using the spray nozzle and then every three and four months the degreasing and, and the spray nozzle. All right, so the next the next question is, after draining and refilling, what order do I put the chemicals in and how much? So this is going to depend on how many gallons your hot tub is. Typically, kind of the rule of thumb, really, since everybody's either on the chlorine or on one of the mineral sticks of the fresh water system, is typically we need to get the water in balance. And pretty much we're going to do it the same order every time. We always put the first product that we always put in is called stain and scale control. This is the first step that we put in, and if you imagine by its name, it prevents staining if there's any trace metals in the water. If we don't have a lot in the Portland, Beaverton area, uh, but the, the biggest piece of this would be is we've got a scale inhibitor in it. And one of the things that we tend to get in hot tubs is a scale buildup, where it's basically, basically calcium that's in the water will precipitate out either as a hard water deposit on the walls of the hot tub or more commonly actually on the heating element. The hottest place in the spa is obviously the heater. It and if what happens is if the pH gets a little bit high, which is pretty common in hot tubs, calcium in the water will precipitate out of the scale deposit. This prevents that from happening. So you put it in an initial dose in the first three and refill the hot tub, and then a small weekly maintenance dose to prevent that scaling. So after we put the state the state of scale control, the next product that we put in in pretty much most of the Portland. Vancouver, Beaver, Beaverton areas, we have to put the three water balancing chemicals that we put in when we drain and refill. The first one is always going to be called total alkalinity increaser. And this will vary a little bit depending on what part of the city that you live, live in. I think it's normally, what is it, Jeff, around 40? Yeah, 40 parts per million. 40 parts per million out of the tap. So I think the product that just got filled probably has about 40 parts per million of total alkalinity. What this product does, this makes the pH easier to control. This is like the pH shock absorber. And so this will vary in the part of the country that you live. Luckily here in the, from a water quality standpoint in the Pacific Northwest, we've got really good water as far There's as- There's no salt water tubs in the world. Water Sorry, flows, I didn't explain that. We have water softeners on our homes, that type of thing. But it's a little bit too soft for the water we're putting in a hot tub. So we have to add some total alkalinity increaser every time we bring and refill stable. And so the way you do this, you use your test strip, and like Jeff and I were just talking, if it comes out of the tap at 40 parts per million, we want to maintain it up around 125 parts per million. That's kind of the target number. So if you look at the back of the bottle, let's say we had a 300 gallon hot tub, and we want to raise it, you know, 100 parts per million or so, you're going to put in 12 tablespoons. That's how you calculate how much of this product you put in. You add it into the filter compartment, let it circulate, that will bring the total alkalinity up and make the pH easier to maintain. Um, and then if you, the, so you add that, in fact, 
one of the questions that get asked quite often, how soon, soon should we add the chemicals after each other? We always want to wait at least 15 minutes between each of the chemical additions that we're putting in. Yes. Was that scaling in the state, the, the scaling in that, that one there, the recommendation is to run that for two hours. Should I wait two hours and then begin the process for the rest of the stuff? Um, you know what, the balancing chemicals, you can pretty much do those right after. Yeah, it's the, the reason we want it to circulate for a couple hours would be really, we don't want to add a bunch of chlorine to the water right after that product is done for a couple hours. And, and so then, then we're gonna, if the pH needs to be adjusted, that's the second step. So if the pH is either high or low, you're gonna use either a pH increase or a decreaser and just follow the directions on the back of the bottle, which will tell you how to do this to add. Oh, and then the last one is, mind. we'll add a little bit of calcium hardness to the water. The same thing, you'll test that with your test grip. We'll add the calcium oh. hardness to the water. Typically our water is very this soft is here. We typically want the calcium level above 100, 100 parts per million. And so what, it, what is it just out of the tap? About the same as alkalinity or lower? So it's about 25 to 50. We want it up over 100 parts per million. And so in a 400 gallon hot tub, we're gonna add about um, eight tablespoons. You just look at the back of the bottle, it'll tell you how much to put in. So we just now balanced the hot tub, added standard scale, added our total alkalinity increaser, heat increaser, decreaser, added our calcium hardness, and we're ready to go. Yes? Do the chemicals affect the water in each step? So do you just dip it once and then that's what you go off of, or after you put in step one, do you have to test it again? Good, good question. I mean, typically you dip the strip one time. And this is, this is not, we just want to be within a ballpark range. We don't have to be that exact on this. Sometimes people get a little bit too anal on this whole chemical process. Relax. In fact, this first, when you first drain and refill, this seems like a lot of work. This is only a one-time thing. Every time you drain and refill, because our water is so soft here, since we, since we have such good water, we have to do a little bit extra work than you know, somebody living in Boise, Idaho their water comes out of the tap where they don't have to do much because the, the source water they're using is almost in perfect balance for hot tubs. We just have very soft water here, so there's a couple of extra steps that we need, we need to run. So if you dip your strip one time, you know what the alkalinity is gonna be, the pH and the calcium hardness, and then what I would suggest the next day, check the pH. If you've now, the, these two, the calcium and the alkalinity that you put in, these don't change very much. Once you put these two in, unless you've got a leak in your hot tub or you're having a, you know, you get got a bunch of kids in the hot tub and you're getting a lot of splash out where you're having to add a lot of new water, you shouldn't have to mess with these two again until you drain and refill the hot tub. So the next day, check your pH. If it's either a little bit higher or a little bit low, add the pH increaser or decreaser again. And now you've got the water perfectly balanced until you're ready to drain and refill again. Does that make sense? I noticed a couple times you said the silver, what do you call it, silver intent? It, we call this the fresh water the system. Fresh this is a mineral stick. The, I, I hear you ask, okay, so some of you using the mineral stick, and then there's some of you using chlorine. Yes. We're not supposed to use both of those together? You, yeah, you can. It's just there's there's straight chlorine, and then there's the a silver ion, which is just a okay. so, mineral stick. Yeah, good question. So there, some people just hand feed granular chlorine. That's all they use. Some people use this mineral stick. This is basically a low chlorine system. So you don't need to maintain, if you're, if you're using one of these, we're not actually maintaining a level of chlorine all the time. And so it, it doesn't hurt if you do. Right. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So, I, I use that stick, and what I was told was to keep the chlorine in the only purple area. So when I get inside there, and I use the, the chlorine with the silver, uh, in the little filter area, and that's okay. That's absolutely yeah. right. I bet, I bet your water is crystal clear. Well, it changes every three months. Yeah, yeah. but but even even because you're keeping chlorine and this in the water, that it's. I mean, your water should be crystal clear with, with that. I did notice that when I did do the uh, like, monthly filter clean, that that silver thing had stuff like I think it had some of the chlorine attached to it. Uh, it's actually a uh, it's calcification. It's, my, your calcium level might be a little too high in there, oh. and uh, they will attach to the bottom half of the silver ion cartridge. Okay. Is that what it, it kind yeah, of? It looks like a little. Like, it, yeah, if you were to dip that in like an acid, it, it 
basically come off it, I, then you wouldn't be able to reuse the cartridge. Right. So, what's that from? You get the white stuff uh, It's calcification. There, you might have too high of cal levels of calcium in the water. Yeah. Too high, yeah. Okay. I've run, with, the, yeah, the calcium hardness, there might be too much of that or too much of it in the water. Um, either, you know, sometimes I'm actually finding out of the tap, depending on where you live, uh, you actually have higher than recommended levels of calcium. So, um, right down near the Willamette River is one. Um, but yeah, it may have added too much, or some people are adding it every month. And so, that's usually what I see. And, and if you're getting that calcium buildup, you might, I don't know if you. If you're, if you're putting this in once a week, that should, you, this should really keep that calcium from precipitating out. Yeah, that's fine. And I would actually just erase the link because it's populating. I usually use bitlies when it's just with a Yeah. I don't think on that it has a breakup between the initial dose and the maintenance. So I do the maintenance with three capsules like every other week. But I have a lot of uses. But when you took the initial, What's an initial dose? Yeah, so so the it's got, it's got two. It's got for initial the. It the, does have to the, the breakdown. So it's going to be one ounce for three hundred gallons. Right. And and so and, and actually that's both doses unless oh, you have okay. unless you have metals in the water then it'll have you add oh. a little bit extra. All right. So so that's the order we put the put the chemicals in when you're first draining and refilling. So stainless scale, so lock wound increaser, pH increaser, or decreaser, whichever one you need, and calcium hardness. Um, and then the fourth question was after adding chemicals, how do I test the water and what am I looking for? And so really, most people use test strip. Does anybody use a test kit? You know, everybody do use a test kit. And so it's, it's, it's kind of, what's that? It is. Some people like the, I like the test kit because it's more, I can see the colors a little bit better, but it's really personal choice. You're going to be using this, these test strips once a week, and and you know the next day after you've added these these balancing products, check it, check and see how well you did, and if you're going to check the test strip tests for, for really four things: they test the chlorine in the water, pH, total alkalinity, and calcium hardness. And so, if and and again. As long as we're in a ballpark range, like I was saying, sometimes people get a little bit too specific, want to get too dialed in, relax a little bit. The moment, once you put the, especially the calcium and the alkalinity in, the main one that we want to concentrate on is the pH. Is keep that pH between 7.4 and 7.6. That's kind of the sweet spot. And that's where we want to have that level. What happens is if it gets too low, then the water gets aggressive and corrosive. It can be hard on the hot tub. It can be hard on your skin and eyes. If the pH gets too high, it's kind of the same thing. When the water is more scale forming at that point, it can also be irritating to your skin and eyes as well when the pH gets a little bit high. So you know, test it the next day. If the pH is high or low, adjust that. And then once a week, you know, check your pH and check your sanitizing level depending on which system, which system you're on. And if you're using just you know, a couple of you are just using traditional chlorine, the level of chlorine, if you're just using chlorine without one of these mineral sticks, the chlorine level that you want to maintain is between three and five parts per million. That's on these test strips. If it's between three and five, you're good. If it's below three, you want to add a little bit more chlorine. And one of the things, sometimes people get a little carried away with this, this chlorine that you use is very strong. You don't need very much of it. We're talking about teaspoons, not tablespoons. So we want it between three and five. If it's lower than three, we add a little bit of chlorine to kick the level up. If it's above five, don't add any more. The quickest way to get, really to get the chlorine level down, if maybe you got it a little bit too high, open the cover, turn the jets on full blast, it'll dissipate pretty, pretty quickly. Does that make sense? So that's how, that's how we're gonna adjust the, uh, adjust the water and then the, Last question kind of goes along with this is how how often should I check the water balancing levels? And that's really just once a week. You want to check those water balancing levels once a week, and again, the main one is is keeping the keeping the pH the pH in balance. Yep. So, on my on my test strip, which is the calcium hardness at the bottom, I'm at the low end, very very last one. Is that a problem? Do I need to bring it up? 
Are you in a system, a saltwater system? Not now. Okay. It's back over to so, Ojeda. Yeah, so you still want to have a little bit of calcium in the water. Uh, otherwise, like you were saying, it will leach it out of the equipment. Um, a lot of the hot springs equipment has titanium. Mm -hmm. So the, we actually don't need as high of calcium as the, the industry standard. So the, one of the other things that cal having enough calcium in the water, because like Jeff said, there's not much in the modern day hot tubs that in the old days where there was some metal piece of equipment that you, if the, there wasn't enough calcium, it could hurt the equipment. Nowadays, we don't have much of that. But one of the things that having proper levels of calcium would do is also reduce the foaming in the hot tub. So keeping that calcium, like Jeff was saying, if you can get it up above 100 parts per million, that's kind of a sweet spot. And then you'll tend to have better water balance and your water won't foam as much. It's not, it really is, shouldn't be a big deal. If it's bothering you, then the stands go. Are you adding stands go? Yeah, I do that every week. If, unless it's blocking the, the inlet, then it's not a big deal. I mean, if it's coating so much that it is blocking, then yeah, we need to address it. Yeah. Not typical. Yeah. Because it's kind of not, I mean, this part of this is example because my daughter sees uh, band dresses. Shock. When do you shock? Yeah, when do you shock? So the, the shock product that we use, depending on, again, this kind of depends on what system you're on. If you're on what we call the mineral stick, you shock after every use. There's a kind of a lower shock right. dosage we put in after every use, and then we do a heavier either with this or a, a, a shock dose of chlorine once a week. That's kind of the recommendation. Does that fall along with what you guys are doing? Yeah, we typically are telling people to add it right as you're jumping in okay. because it needs to oxidize off the surface, and the best time you're in there, the jets are going, that's when it oxidizes off. Unless you want to add it afterwards, you've got to have the cover off. So I had to cover off. It's yeah, off. yeah. Otherwise, so the enhanced shock has chlorine in it. Yeah, that's a different. So would you use an enhanced shock or uh, a regular shock for so the, this the silver the, system? So a regular shock say. after each use. Yeah. And then or before you use like that. It's fine to do either well, or. It's just that when you add it afterwards, you got to have the cover off. Well, I do have the cover off. Okay. Uh, it, yeah, should be fine. I mean, basically, it's the biofilm is kind of oxidizing off, and it'll attach to the bottom of the cover, and then you get this like brown stain on the bottom of the cover. So you don't need to put that in when you first fill it, just when you're in you using know, it. Just when you're when using just it. you're in it. And I heard a tablespoon per person. Yep. Is that right? Okay. That's usually what we recommend. And then yep. I heard a tablespoon of chlorine once a week. No, that's a lot. A tablespoon. It, it depends. It's like. Three teaspoons is a tablespoon, mm -hmm. so if you're using it a lot, then yeah, maybe a mm -hmm. tablespoon, but normally, no, a teaspoon per person. A teaspoon per person yeah. each week. For uh, chlorine. For chlorine. Yeah. And, and it that also that depends on the mean, size of the tub, too. Yeah. Okay. So, so it, is, it, it is a little bit of trial and error with this, and so the, the bottom line is, how's the water looking? getting a lot of foaming. So it's a little bit of trial and error. There's not a wrong or right way, like we just talked about. Some people shop before they get in. Some people do it when they get out. There's a number of different ways that, that you can that you can do this if you're um, if you're just eating. You're, you're just adding traditional chlorine to the water. Again. Many people just use chlorine. That's all they need. So with this, one of the questions we get, get asked quite often, how long is this going to last? And typically, you're going to have to put this in every couple of days. Because it, it just the hot water, the aeration tends to make this dissipate pretty quickly, and you want to keep it between three and three and five parts per million. You folks that are on the this system, this is basically a light chlorine system where we're going to be putting in this before or after use, and then once a week you're going to add a little bit of chlorine. Now, if your hot tub gets a lot of usage, you might need to put a second treatment of chlorine.
chlorine in. In fact, a lot of times if you're on this mineral stick and the water gets a little bit gets a little bit cloudy, you just had maybe a big party and a lot of people in and out, usually our answer is going to be adding chlorine. That pretty much fixes most issues where we've gotten heavy bather load. That's that will typically fix most of those types of those types of issues. Really, the, the kind of the last thing that we run into just from a problem, the probably the three most common water quality problems we run into are either cloudy water, foamy water, or um, I don't know if it, has anybody in here had we, we call it water mold. It looks like little pieces of tissue, uh, maybe dead skin floating in the water. Yeah. Good. That means you're maintaining the hot, hot tub real well. But that's typically we'll see that. If maybe somebody maybe got a little bit behind on shocking or adding their chlorine periodically, because we see this little, we call it water mold. If you look like in the filter compartment, it looks like, like I said, almost like little pieces of oil floating in the water. If you touch them, they're not hard, they're kind of soft. That's typically for maybe getting a little bit behind on, on your sanitizer levels. And one of the things that also can kind of compound that, especially those of you that maybe have. Bigger hot tubs with how many of you have hot tubs with waterfalls? Okay, and so those waterfalls, sometimes you don't use those all the time. It's good periodically, especially after you put chlorine in the water, to open the waterfalls up. In fact, anytime you put chlorine in the water, open the waterfalls. If you've got a larger spa that has like the burger valves where you can isolate jets in one corner of the hot tub, the other corner is off. Make sure that when you put chlorine in, everything is on. What, what happens is some of those areas where you've got the waterfall or the diverter valve is off and you don't have water going through those jets, that water sits in there and it gets a little bit stagnant and you can get a little bit of what, what, this water mold that I'm talking about. By running those jets and running the waterfall when you put chlorine in, that will help minimize the chance of ever getting there. Um, the foaming, people always ask me, you know, what's causing the foaming in and that's kind of the million dollar question. It could be soap suds off your bathing suits. Maybe you didn't rinse the bathing suit well enough. It could be cosmetics and lotions that you might have on your body. It could be maybe you just chemically cleaned the, the uh, cartridge filter but didn't rinse all this cleaner off. That could cause foaming. And maybe the water's just old and it's time to drain and re refill. I mean, it's not uncommon to get a little bit of sudsing on the water, but if you're getting, you know, Two or three inches of foam. That's not that's not normal. And so you can use. I didn't bring any out. There's an anti foam product that you can use. You do want to use that kind of sparingly. It comes in a little flip top cap. Just it's it's kind of a band aid where you just put a few drops of that right on the foam. That will knock the that will knock the foaming down. But it's going to come back. And so there's maybe some other some other issue. You might shock the hot tub. Maybe it's time to drain and refill. Because you shouldn't have a big head of foam, a big head of foam on there. Um, and then the, really the last one is cloudy water. Anybody ever had cloudy water? It was a little bit milky. That that's probably the most common problem that we run into. And usually that's from one of two things: either not enough sanitizer in the water, maybe we got a little bit behind on our sanitizer or chlorine level, um, or the pH is high. Sometimes, sometimes when the pH gets high. That will cause cloudy water as well, or it could be again. Maybe the water's just gotten old. One of the things that builds up in the water is what's called total dissolved solids. We've got too much stuff in the water: chemicals, minerals, body waste. It's just time to drain and refill the hot tub. But a lot of times, just adding chlorine to the water. Make also make sure your filter's clean. So if your filter's not real clean, and where it's built up with a bunch of debris, is then we can get cloudy water as well. So really make sure your filter is clean, the pH is in balance, and we've got enough chlorine in the water. Yes? I have a question about the ozone thing. Um, because if you've got a lifespan, the yep. ozone is just a bubble, and you can't tell if there's a ozonator working or not. Yeah, so in fact, I'll direct that to Jeff. Her question was, was about the ozonator, which is an electronic device that puts converts oxygen into ozone. I'm sure a lot of you probably have that. And her question was about the, the life of the ozonator. So uh, unless you're going to get into the equipment area, when you get into the electrical, uh, the only way for you to really tell is if all of a sudden your water is now hard to manage, whereas it was easy to manage. 
still have bubbles, but the, the unit is no longer producing ozone for you. So water clarity starts to go down, but you have not changed any of your, you know, the way you're doing things, but the water's starting to get hard to take care of. That's a perfect sign that the ozonator is failing. Bubbles will still be there, but uh, sometimes you can actually smell a, an odor. The, the ozone gives off a very unique odor. It kind of still smells like a field after a lightning storm. Um, you know, just really kind of a clean smell. And that's, if that odor is gone, that's also a sign that the ozonator is no longer functioning. Uh, but usually about, you know, two to seven years lifespan, it kind of varies. Um, if your filters, if you're not keeping up on your filters, that can actually cause those gases to back up into the ozonator and actually will destroy the unit itself because it's, uh, it produces uh, off gas nitric acid. So that will actually back up into the unit and start to destroy it. So keeping your filters clean is really important. That'll extend the life of your ozonator. I've never noticed that. Um, well, the odor on the newer ones is very minimal because the odor, they were finding that the odor was actually kind of, some, some people didn't like it. So you may not smell it if it's a newer ozonator uh, or a newer unit. Um, but sometimes you can't even smell it because it's actually killing the bacteria. And so it, it, by the time it reaches the surface, the gas is gone. How old is the hot tub? So it probably is still working, but it, but the only way to tell for sure is to actually, we, we do an amp draw test. We actually hook a meter onto it and see if it's drawing amperage. Is that simple or is it? Uh, it's, it's not simple, but I mean, we know how to do it really easily, but um, I don't know how, how I would explain it to somebody no, who doesn't yeah, know how to use a meter. Yeah, we would hook a meter on it. We unplug one lead and see if it changes an amp draw. And we're able to tell if it's working. It's very low voltage, so it's very hard to find to, to, to track it. Any other questions? Those uh, aromatic crystals that we can put in, does that cause foam? It shouldn't. It really shouldn't. All of those minerals, the minerals or the liquids, fragrances, those are really all made for hot tubs. They shouldn't cause. The oil-based ones tend, if you're adding a lot of it, it can make foam initially, but it is supposed to dissipate. Um, if you have an ozonator, that will break that down as well. The ozonator, kind of the byproduct, is it breaks down the foam inside the water. So it just takes time. Um, when, you, when you first fill the hot tub, the, the same scale on the other side of the room, how long after the gas is going to be So it, the lady that left, one of the things that she was asking about is waiting a while on the same scale waiting that chlorine after the same scale if you had metals in the water. So if you, in most of the area, do you, is there any parts of the area that you run into copper or iron? Yeah, you know? yeah in the outlining areas where you're on well, yes. The, well, I guess the reason I yeah. ask is I, I call up this, and so it's around an hour or so um, after I've added everything else to the different containers. Yeah. And then Probably don't. You're probably fine with adding. Because I don't want to just. I want the same scale to do that. Yeah, it, it, and, it, and it will. Because you're gonna then you're gonna add it again in a week. Because really, when we put it in that initial time, is we want to make sure that if there are any traces or metals in the water, that it's gonna what we call chelate them so that they won't become visible. Because what will happen is, it, I don't know if any of you've ever added chlorine to the water and the water turned either green or brown. That would be an indication either got copper in the water or iron in the water. So the longer you could wait, it would be better. Yeah, if you can wait a little bit longer, you can wait a couple of hours, that would be better. Because you're still heating the water up, right? It's probably not ready to use yet. Yeah, so so frankly, that would be better to wait a little bit longer because as you just kind of get past, let the stainless steel work better. It would be better to wait you know, at least a couple of hours before you put it forward. How long do you think that it's going to Really, just minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes. I mean, yeah, really not very long. You put it on the clean cycle if you have one of those and just let it, let it run. Yeah. yeah. Is, uh, are you on a hot spring model? Uh, do you know what? It's a little too much. Okay, uh, so that's the TX? Yeah. Okay. 
I don't believe you'd have to read in your own channel. I don't believe that has a 10 minute timer. So you would have to just hit the get and you come back about 10 or 20 minutes. Um, that, and the cover can also be closed during that. Um, it's not venting off anything. So. But the, the stain scale. So I still put it on the clean cycle? I don't think your tub has a clean cycle. It, it does? It does. I've never used it. Oh, yeah. Okay, then, yeah, it's just a 10 minute timer. That's all. It doesn't actually clean the spot. It's just a timer. The clean cycle is just a timer? It's just a 10 minute timer. So when you hit it, it, back in the day, it used to be called timed jets, and for some reason they changed it to clean cycle, but it's, it's just a timed jet. That's all it is, 10 minutes. <laughs> and staining skill is the first thing you want to add before mm -hmm. even checking. Yep. And the last time I did a class, they said to do the um, alkalinity Oops. and then wait four to six hours before testing. That's typically what I do when I'm doing it. I, I, think I probably did. Yeah, I, I probably did. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay, and then test for everything, and that's what I just did for mine. So Are you because ready? when I tested immediately, it was different than when four to six hours. Yeah, was and, and so that's kind of why I was saying yeah. wait till the next day if you need to re. Uh -huh. Sure. If okay. you need to retweak it the next day, which uh -huh. you probably will. It's going to be probably a two-day process. You put the three balancing chemicals in the next next day, and kind of like Jeff saying, there's a couple of different ways to to do yeah. this, and so it's it's really up to, uh, up to you. I mean, the main thing is we get. The, the water balanced. And if yeah. it takes two days to get the water perfectly balanced, that's fine. Full speed. Yeah. yeah. You asked a good question. The question was how <laughs> high should the jets be on when you're adding these water care products? You can have them on full speed. The thing I would recommend is have the air controls. If you've got air controls, these, these are the air, right? Uh, on yeah. this model, yeah. On this model, do you have the air controls off? Okay. You should so have just one. One right near the control panel, just one valve that goes like that. Just be right on top. Yeah, yeah, that turns the jets on. That's your air control. Right. Yeah, Not so you would off. want that off. You oh, that's control. what I did. Perfect. Yeah, the reason we want the air controls is the air controls are what inject more air and give you better bubble action. You want those off when we're adding water care products because that, when the air is being enhanced like that, it tends to make the pH rise and kind of counteract some of the water care products that we're putting. Just have the air control off. Any other questions? Yep. Anything we missed? Anything you want to add? Yeah. So we're talking about this guy. This is the silver ion. Your question was, what's the silver ion do? Yeah, so this is so some people call it silver ion, some people call it the mineral stick, the fresh water. If you look at the if you look at the box, um, it says fresh water continuous silver for sanitizing. So basically this has little beads in it and has silver on it. When the water flows over this, this is down inside the filter, so it's silver in the water, but it's also acting as sanitizing. Yeah, when we mail them to you, yeah, you don't get the box, they're just the mailer. Um, yeah, you're probably on our auto ship program. Um, yeah, so you're just, it, when you get them, you're just supposed to replace them. It's kind of a reminder. Oh, well then, <laughs> there you go. You leave it out for us, and yeah, we take care of it. That shock, that, uh, no. Shock's just an oxidizer. Silver ion is actually very ancient technology. The Romans used to use it in their aquifers. So that's that's where it comes from. It's actually, yeah, it's, it's a, a bacteria is negatively charged. The, the silver is positively charged. It attracts it, gets it into a big enough ball, and the filter filters it out. That's how it works.
so, so, yeah, so, and, and you're the only one using it, so that's a pretty light use hot concept, so that's probably why you're able to get away with just using kind of the light doses like that. That's why there's a little bit of variable. If you know, you've got more people using the hot tub, probably need to do the boring once a week as well. And and I still pretty much in all hot tubs would recommend using the same scale once a week. Because that the the issue with that is you could get scale on the heating element you can't really see. And so we want to prevent that from happening. All right. Hey, were there any questions from Facebook? Because yeah, just one question. If you could talk about total dissolved solids again, just really briefly, kind of what that is. Yeah, so somebody on Facebook asked about total dissolved solids. This is a test. Actually, here, here, at, the, here at the store, they recently um, set up our computerized water analysis system. And one of the tests they can do here at the store is the total dissolved solid test, which tests for everything that's in the water. So it basically tells us if the water is old, and might be the cause of some of your water quality issues like foaming or the water being cloudy. If the total dissolved solid level is too high, which typically is above 1,500 parts per million, is what they would be testing for. Basically, it tells us the time to rain and we fill the hot tub. That's basically what that test does. All right. Thank you folks very much for coming. We appreciate it. Um, again, you've got your 20% off coupon. That tag with the 15% that we've got.